Do you wish there was a software that took your FPV shots and made them perfectly smooth, got rid of any camera shake or any mistakes that you made when flying? Well, me too. And if you find one, please let me know because I would love to use it. However, today we're going to be talking about a software that gets pretty close. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Gyroflow. Gyroflow is a camera stabilization software that takes the gyro data that your camera captures and uses it to counteract that movement in order to give you stable footage. I'm gonna to explain to you the way the software works and then I'm gonna show you how I use it. First things first, Gyroflow is not this perfect software that you can put over top of anything and it just makes your footage look perfect. If you put garbage into the program, you're gonna get garbage out. And if you put a good enough product into the program, it can help enhance that product. Now I'm gonna give you some tips on how to set up camera settings and how to do your footage in order to give Gyroflow the best possible chance at making your footage perfect. But these are not hard and fast rules. These are kind of just best practices. And while yes, it will help to have this structure at the beginning in order to get your footage to look the best, that doesn't mean that if you don't follow these guidelines that your footage won't look good because I don't always follow these guidelines whenever I'm filming. First, you want to try to record at 60 frames a second this gives gyroflow even more information in order to make adjustments to your footage but honestly i put in footage that's 30 frames a second and i don't have any problems with it so the next thing you want to do is have a high shutter speed now cinematic rules say that your shutter speed should be double what your frame rate is so if you're recording at 30 frames a second you want your shutter speed to be 1 over 60. if you're recording at 60 frames a second you want your shutter speed to be 1 over 120. 20. Now, this is for motion blur purposes. That has something to do with your eyes and the way we perceive motion. But for Gyroflow, you don't necessarily want that motion blur because that's gonna interfere with your final product look. So you wanna give Gyroflow a higher shutter speed so that the frames are more tack sharp so that whenever it's blending everything together, it looks really nice and clean and there's not too much motion blur in your footage. And I've heard that it also causes issues with Gyroflow being able to interpret the video. Now, personally, I put my shutter speed on whatever. A lot of my fly throughs that I do are on automatic shutter speed. And I know that it dips down the double your frame rate rule. And I know that it goes way higher. And honestly, I haven't noticed many problems. And then also too, I add motion blur into my footage after I'm done. So if I'm recording at a high shutter speed and there's not that motion blur, I'll just add it back in. So those two steps are kind of your foundation in order to give Gyroflow the best product possible. Now I'm gonna take you actually into the program and import some footage and show you what my process is and how I adjust my footage once it's in there. Before we get into editing the footage, take just two seconds and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe. It, I appreciate it more than you know, and it really supports the channel. And while I go to import the footage, I've been using this PGY Tech card holder and reader all in one and this thing is a freaking game changer i love this so much and i can't recommend it enough throw it in your drone bag you won't be disappointed anyways let's get into it okay so here we go we've got gyroflow opened up we've got the footage imported i've got two flights that i did today here one is a normal smooth flight the other one i just went kind of crazy and wild with it just to show you the difference between putting garbage in getting garbage out and putting a good product in and getting a good product out because flying has so much more to do with gyroflow's ability to track your footage than anything else and it's so important so the first things first is you have to have smooth flights in order for gyroflow to do it um, because gyroflow is going to crop in and the smoother the flight, the better. Okay, so we've got our footage imported into Gyroflow. I have turned off the stabilization. When you import the file in, it'll automatically stabilize it for you and read the gyro data. Um, but I wanna show you what it looks like without the stabilization first. So here is without any stabilization on it. And as you can see, it's <clears throat> it's pretty shaky. We had, uh, it was a windy day today. We just had tornadoes yesterday. So um, we're recovering from that. But yeah, so you can see the footage, it's pretty shaky, not the greatest. 
Now let's uh, throw on the stabilization. And this is just the stabilization that Gyroflow put on it. I have not adjusted any settings. And you can see it's pretty perfectly smooth. Um, if you'll notice at this spot, that was where the wind was catching it and it was shaking really bad and it's not doing it. Um, it is, it is rock solid. I mean, we've got smooth flight. You take it off, you can see just the little speed wobbles and stuff. Um, the wind hitting the drone, turn it on, perfectly stable. And that's without me touching anything. Now, what I will normally do, um, you can see here, there's a little bit of a crop within this image and it changes the, the distortion of the lens and that kind of thing. The only thing that I'll really do is sometimes I'll turn down the stabilization. So it's about half strength right now. Um, I'll turn it down to about 0.3. Um, that seems a pretty good spot because you don't want your footage so smooth that it looks fake. You want to have a little bit of camera movement in it. It's the same reason why you don't want to film absolutely everything you do with a gimbal. It's just because it's too perfect. So if you bring down the smoothening a little bit, it takes out the big stuff, but it still leaves a little bit of the flow in. So then we'll hit play on this. We'll show what this looks like with just less smoothening on it. And so it's still, it just looks really good. But you can see at that spot right there around the shed, there's a lot of speed wobbles from the wind catching it. I mean, look at that. And so Gyroflow completely takes that out. Um, you would never know that the drone was shaking like that not even a little bit. So then another setting that I will mess with sometimes is locking the horizon. And this just keeps your footage perfectly straight. I won't do this for everything that I'm flying. I normally only do this um, for something like fly throughs. If I'm flying through a home, if I'm flying through a business, you want your horizon to be locked. And so I'll do that. But I can show you here. Um, the horizon lock is pretty awesome. And every setting that you add to this is going to add a layer of crop. So the more things that you tell the program to do, the more it's going to crop in your footage. So if you record with 4K footage, it's better than recording with 1080p because everything that you do, you start to lose more and more resolution on your image. But you can see, I mean, horizon perfectly locked. Um, it's not doing anything, but you can see too. I mean, look at how much difference that is. Now I will say you can see that crop. Absolutely. But it's still crazy that it can tilt that much. That's insane. So then after that, you've got your zooming speed and zooming speed is going to be how much it crops into the image and out whenever it's trying to stabilize because it doesn't just put a flat crop over top of it because if it did, that might ruin a whole lot of your footage because it would probably have to zoom in pretty quickly. So it'll zoom in and out with your footage on depending on how much the camera rotates. And this over here controls your zooming speed. I just keep that on the default. Rolling shutter correction, I leave all of that where it's at. Um, I don't change any of those things. And then my export settings, I leave it on H.265, HEVC. Um, with that because that keeps a smaller file size. Now, anything else, you've got your motion data over here. I don't change anything with that lens profile. It's already got the DJI lens in there. Um, so I don't change any of this stuff. Truly, the only two things that I'm really changing is the smoothness and my horizon lock. Those are the only two settings that I actually mess with whenever I'm dealing with Gyroflow. Now, let me show you the way the program works. Um, so if you change your field of view to super wide like this, you can see it's stretching the image and, and that kind of thing. Um, but watch what happens as it stabilizes it. 
you can see it moving around in the frame. So essentially what it's doing is it's creating a center point and then it is moving your frame around in order to keep it in that center point. So that's what it'll look like whenever you've got good footage put into it. Let me show you just a, a little bit of a crazier flight that I did and show you just the difference between the two. Um, so I, even looking down at this graph down here, you can see there is a vast difference and the amount of movement in this graph on your axes than there is in this footage. Um, I mean, completely different. So all of those lines, gyroflow is having to stabilize. And if you look, the crop in on this footage is much more dramatic um, than the other footage because I was crazier with it. But that's the thing, is it still smooth? It's still smooth. Even with me going absolutely ridiculous, it is still smooth. Um, now, I will say there is an evident loss in quality because if you're looking, it is cropping in quite a bit on this. Um, this is what it looks like. I was really giving it, uh, giving it some bad shakes. This is what the footage was looking like while I was flying. I mean, I was shaking that camera like crazy. And now let me throw the stabilization back on with it. And you can see it's it's still got some movement in it. You're not gonna be able to get out the movement with how much I was moving. Um, and it does look better, but it's still not as good as what that smooth flight was. But yeah, I was, uh, I was hitting it pretty hard with trying to shake it and stuff, just to give you an example. So then, you know, if, even if you're using some footage like this, if you wanted to just take down the smoothness to like 0.1 um, and then turn that on, it's gonna take out a lot of it, not all of it though. I mean, then you could go to your smoothness to where you're at like 1.8 and your footage will be much smoother. But once again, you're cropping in so stinking much. Um, so yeah, we'd keep that at about three. And then you can even do horizon lock on it. But as you can see with how much I was shaking the camera, the amount that, that horizon lock has to zoom in in order to stay locked. And it'll attempt to do it, but it is just, it's atrocious. Um, so with flying like this kind of freestyle footage, you're not gonna get, you're not gonna get perfect footage from it that doesn't move at all but you can get rid of a lot of the little just shakiness that's in it to where everything that you're flying looks more intentional. So I hope you found this information useful. Um, just know that Gyroflow is a tool. It is not an end all be all, but it is something that is supposed to help enhance your footage. Just like there's no particular drone that will be absolutely perfect. There's no software that's gonna be perfect, but everything is a tool that is going to help you get better and better. And you have to figure out your own settings. So I suggest going out, flying a bunch of different packs, flying a bunch of different ways and bringing it into Gyroflow and just testing out what works best for you. Because while yes, there are some guidelines on what you wanna do for your footage, those are not the rules that you have to follow. And, and even if you follow them, your footage is gonna be perfect. It's all about personal preference and what works for you. So I suggest testing, testing, testing and figuring out what is gonna be best for you. If this was helpful for you, let me know down in the comments down below. And if you have any other questions about Gyroflow or if there's things that I missed and I didn't talk about that you might have knowledge on or that you want knowledge on, let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to get back with you. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Consider um, supporting me on Patreon. It really means the world to me um, and helps me continue this channel and create videos just like this. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.